Well, I was gonna say we got a special guest here, but the guest has already arrived. It is, hold on, I gotta get to the front door. This guy. Hey, hey, hey. what's going on, everybody? I'm tired. What's going on with you, man? Man, I had a long, boy, boy, boy. So we get back to the shop, and then we gotta unload the truck, and we gotta unhook the air compressor, and we gotta do this, and we gotta do that, and. Well, I'm glad I didn't call you back to work, because it's been like two hours we've been waiting on you. Yeah, well, I appreciate y'all waiting. I mean, you know, I, yeah. I apologize. No, I'm not saying it like that. Yeah. I'm, I'm saying it. I, I truly thought you would have got called back into work because it got sunny outside. Yeah, uh, it did, but we got caught in a monsoon out there, man. It, the, the, the whole bottom dropped out, dude. And uh, we had holes uncovered in, uh, on the feeder lane, Virginia Beach Boulevard, and, you know, uh, you can't leave them like that. So we had to put the plates back over top of them in the rain and set the cones around, you know, the whole nine yards. So you're working out on the, the boulevard, like a main road? Yeah, uh, it's, uh, actually it's a feeder lane that runs off of the Beach Boulevard, but yeah, it's right by the main road. Do people right. honk at you when they drive by? Man, it's unbelievable. People, yeah, some people do, um, but people drive by, it's like, you know, there's supposed to be a speed limit in a work, in a work zone. Yeah, you get a you get a bigger fine if you get caught speeding in the work zone. Yeah, and uh, man, I mean, we're like right here working, and and you know they got a a, a vehicle distance to get by, you know, and and they fly by. I mean, they're like sometimes they're fifteen twenty, boom, you know, like slow down, man. Tell them real quick, rabbit. Slow down. Hell yeah, and I mean, look, that's to be expected. You know, it's to be expected you're gonna have to deal with those kind of things when you're working a real job. When you're working a real job. Well, you know I had to throw that in there right there. Yeah. I ain't forget about that. I know you. That was a nice little shot you but threw. But you know what, that wasn't a shot at you though. <laughs> it was just saying, you know, I mean. I was just, yeah. Working with you was awesome. I mean, you know, they, they, they take care of things. I can get medical, you know, I can get dental, I can get everything, you know. Um, I mean, I can set up the whole nine yards with this company. Heck yeah, man. Yeah. Well, I'm super proud of Rabbit. We've got him over here. We're gonna do an update. I wanted to get a little, uh, like a little bit of an intro to the video mm -hmm. before you showed up, but I didn't get that. So we're just gonna, we're gonna run with it the way we got it. We haven't seen Rabbit in quite some time <laughs> since the last time that we did the mail video. Since the last time we did the mail video. That's the last time I was able to get by here. Um, you know, work keeps me swamped pretty much and I like it. Well, I'm glad that you're enjoying working and you are a hard worker and uh, that company definitely has uh, a good worker in you. Yeah, uh, I, I feel the same way about that. And you know, it is ironic that you're over here and we do have packages. I see that, a lot of packages. I haven't gotten a chance to go through much of this stuff at all. I opened this up right here because it just said P.O. Box. Uh, but this was actually for you, Rabbit. I opened it up. And uh, this is an awesome supporter of After Prison Show. He's got a YouTube channel, Mr. No Sleep. Mr. No Sleep? That's his, yeah. Oh, is that his name, Mr. No Sleep? That's his YouTube name. I, it might be his real name for all I know. Mr. No Sleep. Well, I mean, you know, I, you can relate that to a lot of things, you know. Uh, how you doing, Mr. No Sleep? Peace, bro. <laughs> but that's for you right there, Rabbit, if you want to open that up. I want to open more stuff up, but it just doesn't feel right if Dave's not here. Yeah, well, um, is Dave going to be able to make it, or do you know? I don't know. I don't know if he's working through the rain. I need, to, I need to set it up. I need to talk to him. I'll try to talk to him over the weekend and see if we can get this. Today it's all about you. That's fitting for this video. Ding, 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 ding. What do we have for the winner, Johnny? Okay. Let's find out. Today it's all about you. Wow. That's a Amazon That's gift a, card. That is a twin. Can I read this? Yeah. Says, Dear Rabbit, I just wanted to send this card and gift because seeing you on APS has inspired me to make positive changes in my life, just like you have. I hope the gift card helps. I love your stories and I love all that you, Joe, Dave, and Cody do for us fans. Love, Mr. No Sleep. Mr. No Sleep, I, we do love you and we greatly appreciate your support and we appreciate all the love that you sent. I've never done the Amazon thing. I don't even know how to go about it. Yeah, I was about to ask you, have you ever, I'll okay. teach you, it's not hard. Okay, but, but I will promise you, I will put this to excellent use. Amazon's sort of like the Illuminati. They've got the, the anything that you could possibly want on that website, 
they've got it up there. So oh, if there's okay. anything that you need for work, anything that you need for you, uh, you can find it on that website. So can I pull the website up on my phone? Amazon yep. Website? Yep. You can do it right okay. there on your phone. So, set it up an account. Right. I think you got to set up an account, right? Maybe. I don't know if you have to more, you may be able to do guest checkout. Oh yeah, you can probably just do a guest checkout without setting up an account. Because if you set up an account, they've got this two day shipping and that costs a hundred dollars a year. Okay. So, but you don't have to do that. Right. I think they, uh oh. Here we go. Uh, Rabbit, we're gonna need you to come back to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just had to. Hold on, hold on, what? We pulled up a website, didn't we? That wasn't supposed to pop up. No. Let me find out you know about something. I don't know how to get this off my phone. <laughs> Cody does. I'm glad I'm here. Cody, you can get, help me get this off my phone because you're a beast at this, man. Well, look, man. Anyway. Let's do a little update with you. We haven't seen you in a while. We're going to set up the mail time video. That's going to be coming soon. Oh. Uh, the mail is just going to be sitting here. I want to show you this real quick, too. Somebody sent this for Dave. Oh, wow. Uh, it's got Dave's name on it, and it says it's from the uh, a place for the blind or something like that and if you shake it it almost sounds like there's a fishing pole inside of it but i don't think that's what it is i think it's a walking stick i don't think it's enough weight for a fishing pole but it could be like a bass pole or something maybe i'm gonna go with a blind person's but walking cane blind let me see free matter for the blind or a handicap they probably should have sent that to you because you got a bad vision problem and i'm not saying that to be funny right i mean this could be genuinely helpful if that's what it is so you, you know you got to go there. Come on, come on, man! <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Hell yeah! Well, look, Rabbit, let's go upstairs. Okay. We're gonna do this kind of impromptu. We're gonna just uh, sit in some chairs okay. and just talk with you, man. That sounds great, man. Remember how we said in the past we were gonna do me and you in front of the camera and just talk about some things? We did, yeah. Well, we're gonna do that right now. Let's do this. Hell I'm yeah! In. Hell yeah! Damn right. So, anyways, we got you here, Rabbit. It's good to see you. We yeah. haven't seen you in. Well, probably about a week or so, mm -hmm. and you just been working your ass off every day. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm locked into the job. You're enjoying it though. I am. Um, actually, I'm getting back in shape. Man, that's all. I'm working out. I'm running, trying to get my wind up. <clears throat> you know what's funny though? And I know you're laughing. I know you're laughing, but I've been doing it four weeks now, eating salads, no sodas. I'm gonna be in. I'm gonna be somewhat in better shape. But rather, you said something to me. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, you remember when I came and told you I was getting ready to go jogging and you broke down laughing because you thought that I might die out there? Yeah, because I wanted to follow you on the scooter and make sure you didn't fall out. Right. So I got on that one one for you. Well, you said something to me that was really powerful. Okay. And I've never been able to forget this and I kind of blame you for this because sometimes things people say stick with you. Okay. And something you said to me stuck with me. I said, Rabbit, I'm getting ready to go run. You broke down laughing. I said, well, I'm going to use this as a as a way for me to quit smoking. Mm -hmm. And what did you say to me when I said that? Wow, that's a good question. Um, I don't remember that, I really don't. You said, uh, that's not gonna work. You were oh, I did. I said, that's not gonna work because when I used to work out all the time and I would run, I ran every day, mile or two, you know, whatever, around the track when I was locked up. And uh, sometimes, man, I run the track while I was smoking. Straight thug life for life right there. That's the, that's the type of dude you know you don't want to mess with in prison. The guy that's running around the track, he's got wind, and he's smoking a cigarette. Yeah, I was okay, but I was young right there. So. Well, you told me that, and I was like, Rabbit, that ain't, that ain't true. That ain't true at all. I'm going to get back in shape, and I'm going to quit smoking at the same time. Okay. Well, How's guess what? I'm working for you. I'm, I'm smoking just as much, if not more. Right. I know you. Boy, are you smoking while you run? Not yet, but I probably could. You need to work on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad to hear that, you know, with the physical work that you're doing, it's starting to get you back into that. Oh, it is. Man, yeah. I don't know what the right word is, but, you know, you definitely. Conditioned. There you go. Yeah, it's I'm, I'm getting reconditioned, basically. You know, uh, I'm right. I'm, I'm, I just feel it, man. It's just vigorous. You know, it's, 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 it's a lot of physical labor. It's a lot of digging, it's a lot of jackhammer work, you know, a lot of heavy work. And I'm starting to get used to it, man. You know, there's, it's a, there's a lot of good things to talk about with this job that you have right here. One, you're working at a good company that's paying you a decent wage. What do you feel like the opportunity for advancement is in this company? You feel like you can go far with these folks? Could this be a stepping stone towards something better? I believe that... Uh, 
taking into consideration the possibility that I continue learning as I am, you know, because I'm picking up one pretty quick, that, um, you know, I can see myself with this company 10 years from now. Learn the trade, making good money. Yep, learn the trade, making good money, you know, moving on up to a formal position or whatever, you know, yeah. Company vehicle. Yeah, most definitely. It's crazy because I know personally, you definitely know this personally, you come home, Finding a good job, it's not always the easiest thing to do. It's not easy, man, but you know, I had, okay, so number one, I had the honor of being affiliated with the actor prison shop. I had the honor of being introduced to you. I met Joe, I mean, I met Dave. So, you know, I had a jump start right out of the gate. Cause not only through now, after prison show, did I get a place to stay at, you know, um, you know, for a while until I get on my feet. I also got a job with Sean. I got hooked up with Sean. So I had a job and a place to stay, like, you know, shortly after I got out. I mean, it was a little while, maybe a few weeks or what, but, and then after I got that job, then it was like, I don't know, man, I just took off. You know, I, I greatly appreciate the things that you're saying about me, about After Prison Show, and it's always my hope to use After Prison Show to help anybody that we can help. It's not always, uh, it doesn't always work out as well as I would like it to. But one thing that I want to do moving forward is, is I want to put together a list of resources. You remember when you were staying in the hotel and you brought me all of those resources that Virginia Beach had, where you can go get a bicycle, shelters, places, churches that offered meals. I remember that. Well, you know, also you can get that piece of paper from probation that, I, that, that has like the jobs on it, places that hire felons. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that information is not even correct because some of the places really don't hire felons. This is true. And it's based upon the type of felony that you have. Walmart, for example, they're not going to hire you if you got a stealing charge. Right. Uh, you, you could get a job if you got a DUI with them. So, I'm sorry, I apologize, not to cut you off. No, go ahead. But I do have something that I want to bring up. My boss pulled me to the side about, and I, and I haven't said anything about this to you or anybody else, you know. My boss pulled me to the side about it, mm, maybe a week ago, I guess, you know. He says, hey man, he says, uh, you know, um, the company, the guy that runs the company, which I'm not going to call his name, right? you know, said that, uh, that he looked into your file, you know, my past record, right? And that it wasn't good. And it said that uh, he wasn't sure about whether or not they were going to be able to keep me on board. Actually, it was a few weeks ago. I apologize. Because it was like maybe four or five days after I started, you know? And, and I never said anything about it because it became irrelevant. Right. But I want to say something about it now, you know? So he said, you know, uh, the guy's not sure if he's going to be able to keep you on board because of your past record, which I understand that. Like, I get that. Okay. A couple of days later, my boss pulled me to the side again. He says, hey, man, he said, look, I just want to let you know. He said, what we talked about the other day? He said, don't worry about it. He said, I went in there and spoke up for you. He said, man, you're a hell of a worker. He said, you're smart. You're picking up on your stuff quick, you know? He said, I like you. You're a thorough, genuine person, and I want to keep you around. So I told him the boss man that I'm going to keep you on my crew and if anything happens if there's any responsibilities anything comes up he said I'll accept full responsibility for whatever. Well look at that your work ethic alone proved your worthiness to the company when they were unsure about keeping you on board and this doesn't have anything to do with that particular point though that particular point that you make right there is very important but what I was interested in doing and what I am interested in doing is compiling better information, especially in this local area, but I guess, you know, eventually if we can get it nationwide, places that actually do legitimately give you a chance with the criminal record. Mm -hmm. You know, there's certain warehouse jobs, there's certain construction jobs, there's certain construction jobs that don't. Like in the case where you're working at right now, it could have very likely been a situation where they just said no. Yeah, it could have. I mean, the guy could have just come out and said, hey man, you know, we really can't keep this guy. And then what do I do? Okay, I'm like, okay, I, I understand. I get it. I know. I got a bad record. I can't change it. But taking into consideration the fact that everything that I've done in my past, 
makes me the man that I am now. You might want to reconsider. You know, Rabbit, you're a very humble dude. You're a very soft-spoken but thorough individual like you had mentioned the boss said about you. There's a couple of things that I want to address with you in this update video with you. And the first one is, uh, it's going to be a couple of different points. More so as of late, people are reaching out to me for either family members or friends. Hey, can you talk to this person? They're dealing with addiction. And I was even talking about this on the Bobo this morning. I said, you know, I'm really not the person. My addiction was cocaine. That, of course, was an addiction. Really separated from that. Uh, but your addiction to the opiates and that type of an addiction is so hard to break away from. That's so much harder than uh, I truly believe like a cocaine addiction is. With the fact that you've been out here for as long as you have now and you have maintained your sobriety and that has been such an uphill battle for you in your life, what do you think? I want you to just talk about what you truly feel, being somebody who has lived it, is the most important thing to not only attempting to get sober from those types of drugs, but maintaining that sobriety. Uh, actually, man, I can I can sum that up pretty quick, okay? Because, um, as you said, I'm living it now. So, okay. Number one is <clears throat> you don't go around the drugs and you don't let the drugs come around you. If somebody's around you or you know somebody that gets high or whatever, whatever, you know, Man, don't be nasty, don't be mean, don't be disrespectful. Just say, hey, man, you know, um, it's going to be really difficult to hang around with you. You know, I, I, you know I'm, I'm trying to stay clean. You know, you're doing your thing. It's not going to work out that way, you know, because being around you, being around the drugs, all, it may make me want to do drugs as well. So that's a main thing there, okay? Keep the drugs away from you. Keep the people that use the drugs away from you. Change your environment completely, where you know everything is at, where you know all the drugs are at. I mean, your hometown, wherever it may be. Mine was South Norfolk. Man, if I go back to South Norfolk and hang out for any amount of time, you know, I might, you know, I might even be able to go there and, you know, go to the bar and have a few beers and leave. But as long as I don't hang out and run around and try to, you know, run into people that I've known in the past, I'm okay. You know, you can't. You can't live an environment in an environment where you have been getting high at. It's just not going to work because you know every corner to turn to get anything that you want to get. Too many reminders, too many memories. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's automatically going to be in your head. Oh man, you can be riding on the street with a pocket full of money and not even thinking about getting high and see, and see your, your dude like, oh man, you know, and then, then what? You go have a few beers and then they start thinking about order, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, that's just how it works, man, you know? So, you know, you got to keep it away. You get, you've got to keep the drugs away from you. You've got to keep the people who use drugs away from you. You've got to stay in a new environment, man. And you've got to do positive things with your life. You know, I mean, you might not be able to get the best job in the world. I certainly can't. I could make it a good job, but the thing of it is, you've got to find things to do to keep you from wanting to be around the drugs or keep you from wanting to get high, you know? Like, I've got hobbies, things that I do now. I, got like, I, I love to fish. Everybody knows I love to fish, you know? Let me jump in here real quick. I don't mean to cut you off, but I want to talk about the fishing. And what you talked about right there, you got to find positive things to do, you got to find hobbies. Fishing, as simple as it may seem, is probably one of the most important things to your sobriety. It is. Because it keeps you busy, and it's that thing that you enjoy to do. And instead of thinking about going and getting high when you get off of work, you're thinking about, I'm thinking about that fish I'm going to catch out here in the river. You know what I'm going to I'm going to get me a couple of them. I'm going to stock my prison. You know, yeah, man. I mean, I'm thinking about, you know, I'm thinking about things that count in life to me. If you can understand that. You yeah. Because to me, at this point in my life, getting high don't count no more. I really appreciate you, you addressing that. Like I said, I don't think anybody could address it better than somebody who's living it every single day. 
And you're a perfect example of that. Prime example of that, and also somebody who is attempting to conquer, you know, the demons of your past. Because every day is going to be a fight for you, uh, and every day you're winning that fight. Mm -hmm. And it's all about maintaining that winning statistic. It is. I'm not working out too, Joe. No. Boxing match coming soon. Hey, hey. hey review. All jokes aside, like I said, I greatly appreciate you addressing that point right there. There's something else that I want to ask you about and talk about, and that is, you know, you were an individual who we were featuring re pretty regularly on After Prison Show. Now we don't feature you as much, and it's not because we don't want to, but it's because you are moving on to bigger and better things. That doesn't mean that you won't continue to be a part of After Prison Show and that we won't feature you every opportunity that we get, mm -hmm. but with the fact that you're not as much of an everyday occurrence on after prison shows. You're still a part of the APS Army. And I want, to, I want you to talk a little bit about what your experience is like being such a heavy influence in the APS Army now, uh, especially now, with the fact that you're not in the videos as much anymore. But I know you're still maintaining that after prison show Facebook page. You're a very positive person. Every morning you're in there posting something good. And you're getting a lot of interaction with different people. It was a fan of the show, as a matter of fact, I think if I can remember, who helped you with the job. Mm -hmm. You know, talk about what your engagement is like and what your interaction is like, knowing that so many people are rooting for you and being able to talk to so many people. Because while we began filming this video, your phone was blowing up. Mm -hmm. And that was either a, a scam call or probably somebody that you've been rocking with through the APS Army. Mm -hmm. I rock with so many people, man. Oh, my God. You know, um, so my friend M Michelle, my mentor, okay, um, she says, uh, man, we're talking on the phone when I write, and she says, man, she says, you got more friends than I've got. On Facebook, you know. I said, well, how many friends do I got? Because I don't know. I don't know how to do that stuff, you know. I just know I got some friends. She said, man, you got like almost 700 friends. You got almost 700. I got, I got 900 <laughs> friends. 1 million subscribers on YouTube. 900. I got almost 700 friends on Facebook. And it's going to only continue to grow. Yeah, I'm sure. Anyway, so, okay. A lot of people that are friends on Facebook are or, or in APS Army, but a lot of people that aren't friends on Facebook are in APS Army. I don't mean to cut you off with that, but there goes that phone. Yeah. That's like 24-7. At work, I got to cut the ring off. I can't, you know, a lot of times I keep it in the truck. Right. Know? But, so, um, okay, back on the track. Um, I have a lot, a lot of people that I associate with are in the APS Army, but they're not friends on Facebook. Right. You know, I guess they haven't put in a request or whatever, because I set most, you know, requests, you know. You got to be careful with that, too, though, and I'm not saying <coughs> anybody in the After Prison Show Army is bad, but you do get fake accounts. Right. I almost got uh, scammed well, by I, a fake account. I, 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 look, I look at the people, and I, a lot of times, like the majority of times, if somebody sends me a friend request, I go to their profile. So you know how to do that. So you, yeah, there you go. You got to you gotta do that. Profile and check them out. You right. Know what I mean? And if you're legit, if it's not some old off the wall, whatever, you know, I get a lot of porn. Yeah, I get a lot. Of porn. Yeah, there's. A, I don't know what happened with Facebook. It used to be family friendly. Now it's it's a DP action. Yeah, so. I get a lot of porn. But I mean, my interaction with the people on, on Facebook and in the APS fan page is extensive, you know, and I try my best to respond to everybody that hits me up, you know, and, and, and I get hit up by a lot of people, bro, you know, so, okay, if I was to sit down and go through my phone and respond to everybody in, in one day, you know, that hit me up or whatever, right? I'd probably be on the phone all day long. Oh yeah, I, probably, I can guarantee it. I'd probably kill two batteries, you know? <laughs> I don't know. But anyway, so I, I, I try, okay, I, in the mornings, I post things. I post something every morning, you know? And it's for everybody. It's for the APS fans as well as everybody else. Right. And, so, and, and a lot of times I post stuff on the APS page too, you know? Like I just posted something on the APS page, um, Maybe day before yesterday, 
deal. Uh, Stephanie says something about showing everybody, showing everybody your merch, your APS merch. I saw that. I actually ran across that post this morning. Mm -hmm. So I so I, I put my APS shirt on, took a picture and sent it. You know, and uh, and you know, a lot of people like that. I, I, I want a couple hundred people follow you know, but you know I'm yeah I'm 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 interactive, very interactive, and I and I enjoy talking to the fans, you know, and I enjoy, man, I just I enjoy the support and the love so much, man, you know, because it's it's awesome. It's I just it's like everybody's on your team. How in the hell can everybody be on my team when I've been on a year all my life? You know what I mean? So it, 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 it kind of throws me out in left field sometimes, but I'm starting to get it, you know. I'm starting to get it when you're a good person, when you try to be good, when you try to do good things, good things happen. I guess one major point that I want to make with addressing that right there is, uh, with everything that you mentioned prior about what keeps you sober, how you attempt to maintain your sobriety, that has to play a major role into it as well. And not just because of After Prison Show and... Uh, it's been a great thing to gain that amount of support that you have, but that amount of support that you have, to know that you've got those so many people rooting for you has got to play a big role, you know, as well. So I'm, I'm done with the drugs, okay? And actually, man, I've been really cut back on drinking too a lot, man. I'm, I've had, I think I've had three beers in over a week, you know, over a week, so that's, that's you know, that's pretty good. You know, I mean, it's a real slack. So, and and I'm not going to drink today, and probably not tomorrow. You know, I'm working tomorrow, so I'm going to try to work Sunday as well. So, it's like, okay, you've got so many people pulling for you, you know, and there's, there's no possible way that you can let yourself trick your own self up into doing something stupid and letting everybody down. You know what I mean? Because there's just too many people on your team. And when you got a support system like that, man, there's no way you can fail. And not only would you let everybody down, but you let yourself down the worst when you realize that you've let everybody down at the same time. Yeah, and that's most important. You know, a lot of these people you might not even really know all that well, but it's a crazy thing to just know that there are so many good people out there who care and so many people who do want to see you do well. And that's why I'm grateful for the opportunity to be able to sit here with you today to do this update because it's been a while since we've been able to do that. And Rabbit, I want to say to you, dude, I'm super proud of you. I'm glad you went out there and got that real job. I know what you meant by saying that. Mm -hmm. And it's something to truly be proud of. You should be proud of yourself for everything that you've done thus far. I think uh, not knowing you from the past, I can imagine this is probably one of the times that you're doing the best in your life. Mm -hmm. And this every little thing that you're doing at this point should just be that much more motivation for the next thing. Mm -hmm. It is. It is because, uh, you know, my next big thing is getting my license. That's, man, that's coming. That's my next big thing. And that's on top. That's, that's over anything else right now. That's my top priority. And then after that, my next big thing is going to be getting my own place. And I'm thinking about moving out in Deep Creek area, you know, um, only because it's way closer to work. You know what I mean? From where I'm at now, it takes me 30, sometimes 45 minutes to get to work, depends on the traffic or whatever, you know? Yeah. Out there, it'd probably take me 10, you know? So, yeah, I'm leaning towards that, you know? Get me a two-bedroom house out there somewhere, you know, my own little spot. Well, yeah, man. It's going to happen. I'll be looking forward to doing whatever I can to help you in every whatever regard I can when you're ready to do that. If you need my help, there's good potential you might not even need it. Right. You know, but I want to make that known and let you know that I'll do whatever I can. But again, I'm super proud of you. I'm super proud to be able to say that you are a major part of After Prison Show. Hell yeah! And I look forward to seeing what we're going to do next. I'm in, man. I mean, I'm game. You know, I'm up for anything. As hold on, hold on, hold on. As, hold, 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 as hold. far as it's. Anything. I'm up for anything as far as it's not related. I mean, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta. In, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a gay day, man. <laughs> All right, well, look, I just, never mind. I'll tell you about that idea off camera. Oh, my God. <laughs>